Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Welcome to tonight's regularly scheduled City Council meeting. A Happy New Year to you all. I thought it'd be best that we begin by reintroducing ourselves. Tonight's council meeting is called to order. I kindly ask our city clerk to please take the roll call. Bruno. Here. Burkhardt. Here. Clements. Here. Ruby. Here. Kilberg. Here. Maladra. Here. Marks. Here. McGowan. Here. Radecki. Here. Swanson. Here. We have a full house tonight, folks. We begin our council meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance. I would like to ask a young woman who has been nothing but busy these last couple of weeks because they are under significant, serious, and dare I say delicious construction. Kristen from Grams 318, would you kindly lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Kristen. <clears throat> Folks, without objection from the Council, uh, I would like to move item 3A, the fiscal year 2020 draft budget presentation to follow item 12A under presentations, so it would be 12B. Hearing no objection, we move on to item number four, amendments to the agenda. Are there any amendments this evening? Item five is the omnibus agenda. All items marked with an asterisk are considered to be routine by this council and can be considered and acted upon with one motion. Is there such a motion? So moved. Alderman Marks makes the motion. Second. Alderman Bruno makes the second. Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Burkhardt. Aye. Clements. Aye. Ruby. Aye. Kilberg. Aye. Maladra. Aye. Marks. Aye. McGowan. Aye. Radecki. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Bruno. Aye. Item five, the omnibus agenda passes unanimously. We skip to item number 9A. 9A is to consider approval of a temporary parking restriction and street closures on 3rd Street between James and South Streets for the Women's March, Fox Valley on January 19, 2019. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Alderman McGowan. Second. Seconded by Alderman Bruno. You have in your packets the executive summary regarding this matter. We do have a special guest with us this evening, uh, Mrs. Mary O'Connor. Are there any questions from the dais for our professional staff who put together the summary? Hi. Alderman Bruno? Uh, I just want to clarify a few things here. There were different times or various times posted in the packet. Uh, the uh, uh, signage will be posted sometime the previous day is my understanding, but the, the street will be closed shortly before the 1030 kickoff. That is correct. The march uh, actually starts with a rally um, in the uh, parking lot of the old Kane County Courthouse, um, and that's all been approved. Um, I believe we're looking to do the street closure from 2 a.m. or the, the closure will begin at 2 a.m. by the city, but we don't expect the seat, to, the street to close. It'll just be the parking that they'll start to mark. Um, and we have move in. Uh, at 6 a.m., uh, the audiovisual equipment moves in. Uh, the volunteers come about 7:30. They have their final training uh, around 8, uh, and they move to position at 8.30. We'll have people from, you know, the train station to all directions to make sure we move the group into the parking lot. Um, we have several guests that will be speaking between 10 and 10.30, and then it's not more than a half an hour walk, uh, and it will uh, conclude. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else on the dais for either professional staff and or Mrs. O'Connor? Miss, forgive me, Miss O'Connor, forgive me. We have a motion by Alderman McGowan. We have a second by Alderman Bruno. A roll call vote would be in order. Uh, Clements. Aye. Ruby. Aye. Kilberg. Aye. Maladra. Aye. Marks. Aye. McGowan. Aye. Radecki. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Bruno. Aye. Burkhardt. Aye. Item nine, ladies and gentlemen passes unanimously. Congratulations, ladies. We look forward to seeing you all. Yes. 
Thank you. Item 10, the municipal bills for payment. So we kindly ask our city clerk to read the bills in their aggregate for our consideration this evening. Total bills, $2,042,008.91. Mayor, I move that we move, uh, we uh, approve and pay the bills as read. The individual items that add up to that amount can be found in tonight's packet on the city website. The motion by Alderman Bruno is to pay the bills as presented, which are also available in our packet and on the city's website. Is there a second? Seconded by Alderman Clements. Any questions or comments regarding the bills? Seeing none, hearing none. Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Ruby. Aye. Kilberg. Aye. Maladra. Aye. Marks. Aye. McGowan. Aye. Radecki. Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Aye. Burkhart? Aye. Clements? Aye. Oh, just one moment, ladies and gentlemen. Item 10, ladies and gentlemen, passes unanimously. Thank you. Item 12A, folks, is to recommend ordinance number 2019-01, amending section 3.1.2 of ordinance number 89-65, Randall Center Planned Unit Development, to allow a kennel, wholly enclosed, and dog daycare as a special use, and two, granting a special use to allow a kennel at a dog daycare facility at 2423 Fargo Boulevard. Is there a motion? So moved. Alderman Marks makes the motion. Seconded by Alderman Clemens. Questions or comments regarding the materials presented to you by professional staff? We also, I believe, have the applicant present this evening. Any questions or comments from the dais? Here, Alderman McGowan. Um, should this ordinance pass this evening, what is the anticipated opening date for this new business? Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Hi. Hi, I'm Dana Champion. I'm the uh, owner. Hi, Dana. Um, yeah, right now we're just working on the architecture drawings and um, would be submitting for permitting in the next few weeks. Um, so we probably won't start construction until end of February, March. Uh, so hopefully by June 1st at the latest. Okay, thank you. And also, um, do you have other similar locations in the area? Is this a franchise or is it's, it just an independent? It is a franchise. It's Dogtopia. Um, uh, they're based out of Arizona. There's about 90 locations across the U.S. and Canada. Um, but this is my first one. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions for our guest? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions in general, ladies and gentlemen? We have a motion. We have a second. A roll call vote would be in order. Mr. Clerk? Kilberg. Aye. Maladra. Aye. Marks. Aye. McGowan. Aye. Radecki. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Bruno. Aye. Burghardt. Aye. Clements. Aye. Ruby. Aye. Item 12A passes unanimously. Thank you and congratulations. Item 12B, ladies and gentlemen, is to enjoy a presentation on the fiscal year 2020 draft budget presented by our city administrator, Stephanie Dawkins. Good evening. It is kind of odd to be back here together, but so glad to be here. Anyhow, um, I'm Stephanie Dawkins, city administrator, but this evening I'm also the budget um, officer for the city of Geneva. Um, I would like to, before I start, recognize others that we have with us tonight in support and who also really did the EMIN's work in getting the budget put together. Um, our senior management team, we have uh, assistant city administrator Ben McCready, uh, Police Chief Eric Passarelli, Fire Chief 
Mike Antonori, Community Development David, Director David DeGroote, Economic Development Director Kathleen Timoshenko, and Public Works Director Rich Babica. Um, also, most importantly, this budget wouldn't have been put together without the assistance of Finance Manager Rita Cruz and her team. And then I also would be remiss if I just don't introduce the other staff that happen to be present tonight. We have Administrative Intern Matt Pasquini, so this is his first budget year. And then we have Officer Bodekheimer, of course keeping us all safe tonight. So I'd like to thank them and welcome them and glad they're here in support tonight. Uh, this presentation is to provide an overview of the fiscal year 20 draft budget. The information contained in tonight's agenda packet, which is available online for those watching, includes the fiscal year 20 budget along with fiscal year 21 budget forecast. The presentation really is gonna be viewed kind of as an overview, eagle's eye, um, and it's really on fiscal year 20. We talk about doing a two-year budget cycle, which we do, but we only actually adopt one year of the two-year cycle. So tonight's budget is the second year from last year, is the first year this year, and then we have the next year. So really what I wanna focus on tonight is that fiscal year 20 budget, knowing that you have the numbers and some of the forecasts for 2021 so we can continue to look forward. Um, the information in the packet is a draft. Therefore, the, I anticipate changes, I anticipate refinement, particularly refinement in some of the text that you got and refinement in those fiscal year 21 budget numbers. Um, as far as fiscal year 20, certainly anything that comes up over the next several weeks, we can make changes or additions. So let's begin. I always like to start with a good quote. Uh, so this one, the budget is not just a collection of numbers but an expression of our values and expectations and aspirations. Sorry, I should, I should not make it my own, should I? So budgeting, this is kind of what we look like. You know, you throw everything up on a wall, you hope some things stick. Um, you're not looking at just numbers, you're looking at what are some projects, what are some goals, what are some visions. And it's the process of allocating finite resources to the prioritized needs of the city. It is our legal authority to spend money and adopting a budget implies that a set of decisions have been made by the governing body, the professional staff, and it culminates in matching resources with needs. As such, the budget is a product of a planning process. As we go through this presentation, I ask you to keep a couple of things in mind. Again, tonight is to present a bird's eye view. We're kind of looking at that 30,000 foot level. We're about two months ahead of last year's schedule, and again, the reason we're able to do that is because we've already kind of looked at these numbers last year, and now we're just in the process of refining them. Uh, in the current draft, there are no new full-time positions anticipated, so the number of full-time employees are proposed to remain the same. The budgets presented keep services at the current level. There are no proposed cuts in service. And lastly, um, if you do have questions on what I'm talking about this evening, I kind of ask that you wait till the end in case maybe I address it or at least just so we can get this all, the information out on the floor and then we can have a good discussion. So let's talk about the process. Um, as I said, you know, a budget is really a planning document. And in making the planning document, you look at other planning documents. So the city has a comprehensive plan. We have some master plans. Those are really our long-term visions. Those are things that we look at maybe that last 25 years. Then we have the strategic plan. You all should be really familiar with the strategic plan. We just recently passed it, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. But that's kind of the midterm. That's looking at five to seven years. And then you have your budget. Your budget is your short term. That's the current year, the next year, and maybe the year after. So as you're setting your budget, you're looking back to these other planning documents that you have, these other plans that you have, and you're trying to incorporate those visions and those ideals into your budget, which actually allocates the resources. So the process, you adopt a strategic plan. The council did that back in, I believe it was October that you adopted the plan. We refined it a bit in November. In November, you establish your priorities. So we have a strategic planning workshop with the council, the senior management team, and a member of SPAC who help take the next fiscal year. You take the whole plan and you distill it down into what you think in the next fiscal year you might be able to accomplish. Once those priorities have been established, then the department heads start working on their department budgets. Uh, they spend some time reviewing what the priorities were, what the needs are, and submit their requests. Once they've submitted their requests, we have individual meetings with each department. Um, we go line by line by line by line. 
Uh, some of you were able to, to witness that and experience how we, how we do that. Um, we try to make sure, again, that we're addressing the priorities, we're addressing the needs based upon the, alloc the resources we think we'll have. Uh, based upon those discussions, the department's head, head and their supervisors go back and refine their budgets. Then they submit, which essentially is their final budget to, for myself to review. I review their budget along with our finance manager. We look at, again, what we think our estimated revenues will be, and then we bring before you a draft budget. The draft budget is required to be a balanced budget. So revenues are equal to or exceed our expenditures. And then once we have the draft budget to you all, now is the time for you to review, contemplate, make changes, make suggestions, say, hey, it looks great, whatever you decide, but then ultimately the city council is responsible to review and adopt the budget. So we talked a little bit about the strategic plan. Uh, this is really an overview, not necessarily for the council, but for those who might be watching. The strategic plan for Geneva 2025 came up with five uh, what we call key themes. These themes were economic vitality, strong governance, environmental stewardship, excellent municipal services, and quality of life. Within each of these key themes were outcomes, objectives, and action items. And then again, like I said, in November, the council, along with the strategic plan uh, chairperson, prioritized various items within the plan. These are the six identified priorities for fiscal year 20. Uh, EV, I've kind of shortened all of the key, th key themes. So EV would be economic vitality, EMS would be excellent municipal services, QL would be quality of life. And you can see these are the six uh, key themes, key objectives that were prioritized. So again, in building the budgets, these are the things that we're kind of keeping in the forefront of the mind. What it doesn't mean is that we throw everything else out. We're still thinking about everything else in the strategic plan. These are just the items that we're really trying to focus on in the next 12 months. And that would be the 12 months starting May 1st, 2019 through April 30th, 2020. So now the numbers. Here's where the numbers come in and some of the associated goals. So the total budgeted expenditure request for all 37 funds for fiscal year 20 is $94,636,440. It's a big number, but again, remember, it's 37 funds. Um, we've discussed this in the past, that we have 37 individual funds, meaning that each budget stands on its own. The revenues and expenditures attributed to a particular fund stay within that fund. Other things to note as we continue are that all funds have a balanced budget. Again, all 37 funds have revenues that are either e equal to or exceed expenditures. Council priorities, as discussed, have been incorporated into the various budgets. Again, as I've said, and I'll say it again, this is just an overview. We haven't dived down into all the nitty gritty details. And although there are 37 individual fund budgets, tonight our focus will be on the general fund, capital funds, the electric fund, and the water and wastewater fund. Those are primarily our big dollar budgets. So here's a comparison of all the funds. From fiscal year 17, 18, the amended 19 budget, which is the year we're currently in, and then you see the request for 20 and the request for estimated request for 2021. Uh, you'll notice that the budget is proposed to decrease by approximately $8.5 million. Um, that's because of a lot of different things. And I always, I'm always hesitant to put a comparison up because when you look at a comparison, all you see are numbers. All you see is that, you know, from 18 to 19, there was a big increase. From 19 to 20, there's a decrease, but you don't know what drives those numbers. It can be anything from a new revenue stream. So in 2019, just the beginning of spring this year, uh, the residents, the citizens voted a non-home rule referendum. So that increased our revenue for sales tax. So you'll see your budget will go up because your revenues go up. Maybe you got a grant award, that'll make your revenues go up. Or you have a loan from the IEPA to do a $12 million upgrade to your wastewater treatment plant. That makes your budget increase. This year, we've paid down some of that loan. We've done some of those uh, improvements, and so then the budget goes down. So again, I think a comparison is a nice thing to look at and see where you're at, but I think you always have to remember it's more than just the numbers. There's various things that go into that, and as long as you keep that in mind, comparison's not so bad. So this is all the funds, all 37 funds. Um, you'll see we have five enterprise funds, which comprise 
the majority of the total city budget, 62%. So an enterprise funds are funds that are financed and operated in a manner similar to private business. So basically it's user fees. So it's your electric utility. You, you fund your electric utility through your rates. Your water and wastewater, it's funded through the rates. Um, our other funds are uh, refuse, the cemetery, commuter parking lot, those are, those are examples of enterprise funds. The general fund is our next largest fund and that's about 21% of the total budget. Again, the general fund are resources traditionally associated with city operations. So they don't have to be accounted for in another fund, so they're accounted for in the general fund. Your primary operations, police, fire, public works, just administration, those are all in your general fund. We have 20 special revenue funds. These are used to account for proceeds of a specific revenue source that are restricted by law. Uh, some examples are our motor fuel tax, city committees and commissions like SPAC or the cultural arts, and then special service areas. The special service area budgets you all have all basically previously saw, um, those happen when we do the tax levy back in December, and the budgets are primarily set either by the enacting ordinance and the needs of those particular areas or from input from the homeowners associations, again, represented solely by those areas that are covered in the SSA. The debt service fund is used to account for the accumulation of resources for and the payment of general long-term debt, principal interest, and related costs, which are not related to either a TIF or a SSA or an enterprise fund. So in short, this is general obligation debt. Capital project funds, we have six of those. Uh, they're about 11% of the city's total budget. So these are to be used for the acquisition or construction of major capital facilities with a few exceptions. We have two internal service funds, our group dental and our workers comp. These are both funds that we are self-insured for and so therefore other funds actually pay into these funds and that's where you get the revenue. And then lastly, we have two trust and agency funds which are our police and fire pension funds and they're about 3% of the budget. And again, these are resources that we receive and hold as a trustee or agent and then they're expended or invested in accordance with conditions of the trust. So 37 budgets, all different funds make up the one big budget. So the, the big one and the one that we primarily talk about a lot, not because it's big in dollars as far as when you compare it to maybe the electric utility, but because this is where you see the action happening. This is where things get done. This is also where most of people's property taxes go. So I think it's the one that most individuals are most concerned with. So our general, the major revenue sources for the general fund are property tax, sales tax, and state income tax. Uh, we've separated in this particular gra graph the sales tax that we were previously receiving, and then you see the NHR sales tax, that's the non-home rule sales tax, that's the half percent. There's another half percent that is a restricted fund, and we'll talk about that, that goes to infrastructure. Uh, but just to kind of give you an idea of, of where we're at. At nearly 37%, the sales tax is the largest source of revenue for the general fund. Fiscal year 20, the estimated revenue collection from sales tax is approximately 7.1 million. Now to put that into terms that are maybe more practical, the police department's requested budget for the same fiscal year is 7.8 million. So the dollars that we receive in sales tax don't even fully fund the police department budget. Property tax at 26% of the budget, uh, revenues are estimated at approximately 5.1 million. Again, for valuation purposes, the fire department's requested budget for fiscal year 20 is also approximately 5.1 million. And then you have streets and fleets, community development, economic development, all those other uh, departments to support within the general fund. And the famous, a picture is worth a thousand words, or at least a dollar. Um, you'll notice here, these are, these are estimated on what we think the tax levies are. We know what the tax levies have been proposed by all the taxing bodies, but until March we don't have actual numbers. But we are estimating that the city's portion um, of the property tax bill is six and a half cents for every dollar spent. So you'll recall it's gone down a little bit. That's we've paid off a lot of debt. So that's where we're at. So for six, six and a half cents on every dollar, the value that the citizens get back, I think, is in spades. Because again, this is your fire, your police, your public works. So another comparison chart, since I already gave my caveat of how I feel about comparison charts. Uh, but this is the general fund expenditure history, again, going back to fiscal year 17 up through 21. 
Um, you do see some increases. As I mentioned previously, 19 is showing that that's the first partial year we had that we budgeted for the non-home rule sales tax. Um, you'll, you'll, I'll also talk about in a little bit for this year, one of the increases are transfers into capital, capital equipment, and there's some additional funding that we're recommending be made for police and uh, fire pension expense. So this, again, we love our charts and graphs. On the left side, you have the category of expenditure, and on the right side, you have the department. So all departments have the same categories. Um, so you have personnel services are your primary driving force. That's your people, that's your wages, that's your benefits, that's your pension expense, that's your payroll taxes. Um, and then if you look on the right side in departments, you'll see that about 80% of the general fund is made up of those public safety departments, police, fire, and public works. I would also point out that administrative services at 13% also include some citywide expenditures that are attributable to the general fund as a whole. So that might be the legal budget, the general liability insurance, and the transfers are all housed within that particular portion of the budget. So that's why their percentage, although it's HR, IT, and finance, may seem high, it's because it's also incorporating some of the expenditures that are used across the board. So some highlights. What, what increased, what decreased? Significant increases are the police and fire pension. So you may recall at strategic planning, we talked about what the actuarial's valuations were. Um, there were some concerns about the returns they were using, and we talked about we would slowly be kind of trying to change that percentage. Right now, the actuary is using seven and a quarter percent. We're trying to get it down to a more, what we think a more reasonable rate of return. So what we recommended this year is contributing an additional $346,725 above the actuarial's recommended contribution rate. What that does is it takes it to an estimated rate of return of about 6.75%. Um, that seems to be more in line with what we're seeing on other funds. So that, the 602 includes that 346,000 addition. Salaries on average increase about 2.8%. This includes unrepresented employees, collective bargaining unit employees, um, it includes, you know, we still have a large group of employees that are, their contract expires April 30th of this year. That's our police officers. We have not yet negotiated that contract, so we don't know where that's gonna fall. Uh, but again, that's where those are for now. The biggest increase you'll see, and I think some of you have noticed this already, is in workers' compensation. 228,000 or 48%, you'll see this in all the funds. We are self-insured for workers' comp. What we have found is that over the years, we kind of, we have not been funding it maybe as um, robustly as we should have been. So the way workers' comp works, it's based on a payroll, and based on your job class, we fund the workers' comp fund. We currently aren't funding it at a rate of what expenses are out. We are, in the past, we were responsible for the first 500,000 of any claim. Last year, you may recall, we went into a new workers' comp reinsurer fund. So again, that's the reinsurer. But now we're responsible for the first 250,000, and then anything above that, the reinsurer picks up. But basically what we're trying to do this year is we're trying to shore up that, that internal service fund. So you'll see these increases across the board, uh, but again, it's not money being spent outside the city, it's money that's actually just being kind of reallocated to a different fund. And then computer software subscriptions. Um, it went up almost 100% which sounds like a lot, but we're, so we're talking 66,000. This is due to the proposed addition of a subscription to what's called Lexapool. It's a subscription service that provides standard operating procedures for police operations, and many of which are statutorily dictated. It also provides training to the officers on these policies and how to implement them and how to do things to keep us kind of on good legal standing. Um, in addition, in this line items, there's also a request for, you'll see in capital, for in-car cameras for the PD. Um, once you have cameras, you have to have a place to store the video. So in this particular section is where the cloud base or wherever the data is going to be stored, and there's a, there's a fee on an annual basis to store that data. Um, both of these items were included in the budget because they address the strategic plan objective regarding excellent municipal services. So that, that's the left. That's your big increases. On the right, you have your decreases. You'll see that while police and fire pensions are going up, Non-public safety pensions, which are the Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund, are actually decreasing. Uh, so there, we saw about a 15% decrease there. Uh, the charges that we 
have to pay to TRICOM. Those went down, uh, some because of call load, some because they're using some of their reserves, because their reserves had grown to a point and they're making some purchases. Uh, group health is down. You'll remember we, we approved the group health plan uh, effective November 1st. The, it was about a 4% or 4.5% decrease overall. And then motor fuel. Um, I think we were just talking before the meeting. It's kind of a crazy year. It's 50 degrees out. Gas is $1.99. I, I, don't, I don't know what's going on, but, but we're also anticipating that we can reduce that a little bit. Uh, so overall, the general fund increase we're looking at is about 660000 or 3.5%. So next, let's look at some of the capital project funds. As I mentioned previously, there are six capital project funds. We have the general capital, which revenue is derived straight from a transfer from the general fund into this fund. These are, these are projects that are not equipment. They're, they're more like studies or anything other than, and I'll give you some examples, than equipment. You have the infrastructure capital fund. Again, we talked about that. That's the half percent sales tax that voters voted for back in 2007, maybe? I think 2007, and that those funds are solely dedicated to infrastructure. Uh, we have Prairie Green, where the revenue now comes from wetland credits. We have TIF 2 and TIF 3, where revenue is derived from property tax increment. And then we have the Capital Equipment Fund, which again is most of the revenue from that comes from a transfer from the general fund, although we are slowly starting to build a fund balance there as well. The idea would be, ultimately to have a fairly healthy fund balance so that we would be able to make purchases based upon our 10-year plan. This is just kind of a quick overview. I know it's, it's kind of small to see, but you'll see it's the six different funds, and then each color is, is the different years. So obviously, you, you notice in fiscal year 20, they're all up a bit, um, primarily because, and we'll talk, but we're, we're starting for projects in TIF 2 and TIF 3 are coming to fruition. Um, in uh, the capital equipment, we now have not a dedicated source of revenue, but we do have revenue that we are now able to transfer into capital equipment and make some of those purchases. So let's look first at some highlights on the general capital projects fund. Um, you'll note on the chart, we have the department that's requesting it, what the description is, the budget request, and then again, the strategic plan objective that it meets. So I, I use, for example, um, let's, the big one that jumps out at me right there is the 400,000 for building improvements under excellent municipal services. What we decided to do here is kind of request a lump sum. I had, I had various requests for City Hall, there were a bunch of different things that needed to be fixed. From the police department, there were a bunch of little things that needed to be fixed. But as you may recall, this year you approved us to do a facility maintenance plan. We're in the middle of that. We haven't even gotten the results of that yet, so we don't know what the recommendation is gonna be and, and actually what needs to be done. So rather than approving various small time fixes, we wanted to see what does the plan say and then we can have a long term plan on how to start addressing those deficiency in our facilities, and so, but we need some seed money. So right now, it's really a ballpark. It's probably a very low ballpark, but we wanted to put some seed money in there so that when we get the results of the facility maintenance study, we can start addressing some of the deficiency in our, in our buildings. Um, and then again, the total, this is not, this is just a sampling of the list. We'll provide you with a full list but this is just a sampling and total recommended expenditures in general capital projects is $670,000. The infrastructure capital projects funds, usually the big one in this is the street program. I did not put the street program up there. Um, what you see here, I think one to point out again, we have the strategic plan. These are not necessarily, I should say, some of these are the prioritized strategic plan items. Some are not prioritized, but again, just because they're not prioritized doesn't mean we don't keep them in our mind. Um, we do have the safe routes to school. We talked about that. We've applied for a grant. We don't know if we're going to get the grant, but if we do, we, we're ready. We're budgeted for it. Uh, the one I'd like to point out is the water, citywide watershed study. This is a study aimed to understand and quantify drainage issues for the city to allow the development of a comprehensive plan to implement drainage solutions in underserviced areas and optimize the existing drainage system. We've talked a lot about our storm drainage system and how there's we need to be making improvements and making investments. So this is, this is to start that process. 
Again, the uh, total infrastructure capital projects fund request is $3,021,310. TIF 2 and TIF 3, it's basically the same project. This is all part of the East State Street construction uh, that we've been talking about at least 10 years because I know we've been talking about it since I've been here. Uh, we do believe that construction will commence in fiscal year 20 with the caveat, it's the state doing the construction. So um, realistically, this will likely be maybe over a three-year expenditure. For now, it's budgeted in fiscal year 20. We may, over the next couple of weeks, look at portioning that out. Just because it's budgeted doesn't mean it gets spent that year. It's just, again, a kind of a placeholder or a plan that you know. And so the reason it's split between the two, there are parts of the street improvement project that fall within TIF 2, and there's parts of the project that fall within TIF 3. And then there's also a part that falls outside of both TIFs, which were on the infrastructure capital list. And then the capital equipment fund. Uh, this is where your equipment comes from for the general fund. The highlights, again, that I'd like to show on this one, um, we're proposing a digital speed message display board, again, to help look at pedestrian safety, traffic safety, rather than just a portable speed sign that tells you your speed. This is a portable speed sign that you can also put messages on. So you can put road closed ahead, festival traffic. You know, you've seen them, I'm sure, other places you've gone. So rather than spend 6000 on a just a speed machine, we thought, it, it made sense to work with the priorities that the council set to do a display message board in addition to the speed. Um, I spoke briefly about in-dash cameras and police vehicles. These are not body cams. These are car cameras. Uh, we feel like, again, in today's day and age, it doesn't hurt to have some of that uh, technology to aid us as we do our jobs. And then you also see a brine machine. I think you all are familiar with, we're currently the last, I don't know if it's been three years or two years, we've been using kind of a homegrown brine machine and it has worked, um, but I think we're having trouble. You now cannot purchase the mixed salt. Is that correct, right? It's the mixed salt you can no longer purchase. So we're having to do more on our own and so we feel like we've tested it. It seems to have worked. Um, you see the strips on the street when it gets cold before snow and it seems to work and they've even been trying some on the sidewalk they got to work on the, the spray of that right now. So right now we're sticking to the road, but, but this would look at including um, purchase of a, brine, a, brine, a real brine machine um, as, a, as opposed to our homegrown one. So the total request for fiscal year 20 is approximately one and a half million. Uh, but I would note that of that 1.5 million, 650,000 of that is for the fire truck that you approved last month. So the fire truck has been purchased, it is on order, but it won't actually be delivered until fiscal year 20, so we have to show it in our books in fiscal year 20. So without that, um, you're looking at the difference of about 857,000 requests for capital equipment. So the, moving on to the enterprise funds. Again, as I spoke earlier, enterprise funds, uh, basically their revenue comes through user charges or fees. Uh, they're anticipated to be fund in a manner similar to a private inter enterprise, so they've got to make the money to spend the money. Um, our two largest enterprise funds are the electric fund and the wastewater, water wastewater fund. So let's take a quick look at the electric. Again, similar charts that you saw in the other one. We've got revenues on the le left, expenditures on the right. Um, electric sales drive the primary revenue source. That's a good thing in a, in a enterprise fund. And then directly related on the expense side, contractual services, which is your purchase of power, are the primary expenditures in the fund. A little history, again, relatively flat when you're looking at, at the dollars here, you're looking uh, fiscal year 19, the amended budget was 44.8 million, fiscal year 20 request is 42.4. It's down slightly because we're anticipating a decrease in electric purchases. Some of the highlights, again, salary increases are salaries, the workers' compensation expense that I, that I spoke to earlier, um, computer equipment. The $100,000 is primarily related to the SCADA system, and they plan to replace, they have like a paper switching map when there's outages that they have up on the wall with an electronic map that is directly tied to the SCADA system. So it's all, again, as we move into this technological age, uh, we're becoming more efficient, hopefully. Uh, decreases are similar to the other funds. Group health, pension expense. The pension expense 
is actually um, a liability owed. So it's more of an expense on paper, not an expense in cash. It's something that we're required to record in our enterprise funds. So as our pension expense with IMRF goes down, so does the pension expense here go down. So that, that's where that decrease is coming from. Uh, I mentioned electric purchases are down, and then a little slight decrease on capital outlay. Overall, we're looking at a decrease in the electric fund of roughly 2.3 million or 5.3%. The water and wastewater, again, similar charts to what you just saw in electric. Um, capital outlay in this particular case is the largest, um, over there, largest expenditure. Um, and again, primarily, your income is coming from the sale of water and sewer. And again, the capital out, outlay right now is we're still we're still in our wastewater treatment plant upgrade um, project. So on this one, you'll see fiscal year 19, 24.1 million, fiscal year 20, 14.7. Again, that's that wastewater treatment plant project. Most of the project expenditures are happening the current year that we're in. By the end of this fiscal year, we anticipate we'll be more than two thirds of the way through the project. And so therefore you'll see expenses decrease. Highlights here, increases, salaries, workers comp, debt service, debt service is direct related to the IEPA loan, decreases, same as what you've seen before, health, IMRF, pension expense, and capital outlay. The capital outlay decreased again because it increased so much with the wastewater treatment plant project. So for the general uh, water wastewater fund decrease, we're looking at 9.4 million or 39.2%. These are the other uh, enterprise funds. We have the refuse, the cemetery, and commuter parking. You'll see in refuse there's there's a slight tick up. Um, right now our leaf and our brush pickup contracts, this was the last year of those contracts, so we have to go out for bid for those, so we're estimating what they might be, but we don't have those dollars yet. And then for commuter parking fund, uh, the green line, you see um, a bit of an increase because we're looking at converting the lighting in the parking deck to LED lights. Uh, which also addresses uh, strategic plan objective, environmental stewardship objective number two. So we've come full circle. We started talking about the strategic plan to begin, and now that I've run through all the numbers, and literally I ran through the numbers, uh, we're back to the strategic plan goals. Uh, again, the following slides, I would like to show you some additional projects and initiatives that have been contemplated within the budget that align with the priorities set by the City Council at their planning workshop. I will note that some of the projects or initiatives may not actually require outlay of dollars in capital sense, but they may require staff time. So therefore, they are contemplated in a budget because obviously staff time, uh, time is money. So we'll just go briefly. I'm not going to read them all to you. Uh, the presentation will be, I can either send it to you all, but we'll also post it on the city's website as we do with all of our presentations. But so for uh, economic vitality objective two, which it has to do with a resilient local economy and increasing the city's tax base, we talk about phase uh, of the East State Street corridor, which we talked about, phase two of the Calts Road extension, um, updating the downtown market study so we know how to attract visitors, we know how many visitors we're attracting, and looking at the Southeast Area Master Plan. For uh, excellent municipal services, objective two, that the city provides equipment, infrastructure, and facilities necessary to maintain efficient and reliable public services. Some of these things we've talked about, the Starcom radio platform has to do with TRICOM and the radios for police. Um, we did a tree inventory this year. The goal for next year is to take that tree inventory and actually make it, put it on our website and make it available for all. So if you have a parkway tree at your house, you could actually go into that interface find out what kind of tree it is, what's the size, how long it's been there, when it was last maintained. So it gives you an idea of what you have on your property. Now for somebody like me who has a red thumb, I just know I have trees. I can actually find out now what kind of trees those are. Um, we're continuing to with technology, integrating GIS um, and applications so that we can actually use live data in the field, not only for our fire department, but for our public works uh, employees. Uh, the fire department is partnering with West Chicago for the use of their training facility. So this is a first class training facility that we're able to use at low to minimal cost and yet get the best services without actually having our own training facility. 
um, and then just some capital equipment investments. Economic vitality, objective one, a healthy population through new housing, uh, maybe a greater diversity of housing. Uh, community development is going to be looking at the code requirements for residential uses above, that should be above, not about, so much for everybody previewing, but above existing commercial structures. And then also looking at a draft inclusionary housing ordinance. We've talked about that. Um, we've talked about having a work session once we get that draft together and that target date. If you all haven't written all of these dates on your calendar, I'm just a little friendly reminder is May 29th to talk about that. Quality of life, promoting an active lifestyle and physical well-being. We're looking at implementing employee wellness issues. We're looking at increasing um, pedestrian, motorists, and bicycle safety campaigns. Again, and we talked about with that message board. Revising parking standards so that we can promote cycling and walking and alternative transit options. Uh, expanding the pavement marking program. That's where we, we repay, remark the, the crosswalks. Um, and then a big one is to revise the bike waste plan to reflect updated priorities, implement, implement timelines, and identify funding. Uh, and then we have economic vitality objective three, encouraging tourism. Um, right now, one of the things we've identified is, as I spoke earlier, is updating the downtown market study. And then lastly, quality of life three, recognizing that we want to be an inclusive community that is welcoming to people of all ages, backgrounds, and ethnicities. Uh, again, we talk about that housing ordinance and a work session. We're also looking at evaluating the city's hiring processes and procedures to help attract a more diverse workforce. So, whew. so what have I talked about and what's next to come? So first, to summarize, uh, professional staff has been meeting since November to develop the budget that is before you. Basically, they were given the directive that they should try to keep their requests as close to zero as possible, yet they have to take into account that there are certain contractual expenses um, that may go up. All funds are balanced, again, meaning anticipated revenues exceed expenditures. However, with the caveat that estimates are only as good as our ability to predict the future. And just because it's in the budget, and I've said this before, it doesn't mean that it will be spent. You have to have the money or the revenue in order to pay for it. And the budget may be changed or amended throughout the year. It may be changed or amended before we even adopt the budget. Uh, that's why we're in these conversations. But based upon either changes in revenue, estimates, unanticipated needs, or perhaps we determine that we were heading in one direction and we, we no longer think that that's feasible and we want to go in a different direction. So again, it's, it's really just a planning document. So as we look to fiscal year 21, and again, I remind you that there is a draft budget numbers included in the packet for fiscal year 21, we point out that some of those numbers need additional refinement and we will continue to do so over the next few weeks. The proposed budget is a recommendation from professional staff based upon the input provided by the city council at strategic planning and in other meetings. Like other organizations, we will use the budget as a financial plan, a business strategy, a blueprint to guide us in the coming fiscal year. However, it is just that, a plan to help move us forward. It can be changed by the City Council as the needs arise. As a result of public policy principles and stat strategies established by the City Council, as well as the challenging work of our professional and dedicated staff, a balanced line item budget has been presented to you for fiscal year 20. So the next steps. Um, one of the, what I was speaking with the mayor earlier is the agenda that's on the dais is not the actual agenda. There, the updated agenda went out Friday afternoon, which included a item for the uh, public hearing, to set the public hearing date. So uh, after this, I'm requesting that we set a public hearing date for Monday, February 4th at 7 p.m. Uh, we are required by statute to have a public hearing. so. The budget has to be on display. The budget is now available on the website. It will be available in hard copy at City Hall. The budget can continue to change. It continued to meld it can, up until the public hearing. And even after the public hearing, changes can be made. But you still have to provide an opportunity for a public hearing. Um, I know. So once we do that, we've set up the next three meeting dates to kind of focus on specific budgets if the council desires. Uh, there's no set presentation, there's no set discussion, it's really going to be driven by the council, but next Monday we'll look primarily at the general fund. On January 22nd, please note that is a Tuesday because of the holiday, so on Tuesday we'll look at all the other funds. January 28th, again, another night for discussion if there's still things that haven't been hashed out or new ideas have come forward. 
public hearing on February 4th, and then potentially on the same evening, February 4th, the city council would be able to adopt a fiscal year 20 budget. Um, I would say, much like last year, what we would like to do, uh, we, would, we would encourage you to submit your questions. Um, some of you have already done so. We will compile the questions, compile the responses. We will post those on the website each week because, again, this is kind of a moving target. So every week, um, I don't know what day yet, but I think in the past what we said is if you get them to me by Wednesday, we can have them posted by Friday, and then you'll, know, you'll have some items for the discussion the following Monday. And with that, I'll try not to mess up the quote this time. Don't tell me what you value. Show me your budget, and I'll tell you what you value. So I appreciate your time. Um, I appreciate the senior management team's time, and I look forward to a successful budget process. Thank you, Stephanie. Stephanie, you referenced at the beginning of your presentation that if there were any uh, specific questions perhaps related to the presentation, you'd be happy to respond to those. Absolutely. And are there any questions specifically regarding the presentation tonight for City Administrator Dawkins? <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I will entertain a motion to establish February 4th, 2019 at 7 p.m. in this council chamber as the public hearing on the fiscal year 2019 20, the 20 budget. Is it 19th or 29th? Say 19-20. Yeah, fiscal year 19-20. Oh, so moved by Alderman Marks. Second. Seconded by Alderman Bruno. Any questions or comments regarding the nature of this motion? As you all know, we gather here on February 4th. We open the public hearing. We entertain questions or comments from the audience. And then we close the public hearing. We have a motion. We have a second. Voice vote sufficient, Mr. A voice vote is sufficient. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Great. Thank you. Item 13, folks, new business and or public comment. Uh, anyone in the audience, any questions or comments or curiosities you'd like to share with the council? From the dais, Alderman McGowan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would just like to congratulate Stephanie and Rita and everyone in the finance department and all of our um, senior staff in the city who worked on our budget. The city was awarded the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award for the ninth straight year. And I think that's really amazing. I, I can't even imagine all of the hard work and um, the heart and soul that went into that. So I think that's really something wonderful to feel really proud of. Um, I'd also like to give a shout out to our water treatment facility for winning the best tasting water. And I don't have the details in front of me. Um, Mayor Burns, are you familiar with that? I am. Can you? say a little bit about that well we tied our friends in the city of Batavia for the best tasting water in Kane County and uh, it, there are multiple communities involved and the taste test is done blindly and these professionals in the water industry taste the water and judge based on all sorts of standards so this year we won again I think the last time we won was several years ago is that right rich about five years ago or so you know, don't talk too much, sir. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah, so it's pretty cool, though. So in celebration of that, we are actually going to waive all water fees for the next six months. And just No? Oh, shucks. Yeah, pretty cool stuff, though. So the water is delicious. Yes, I drink it, it every day. So thank yes, you for all the work that went into that. And I hope we continue to win Best Tasting Water. Absolutely. Anyone else from the dais? Alderman Radecki. Well, since we're giving shout outs, Rich, uh, we made a nice comeback on the leaves and all the down branches from the November storm. You know, it looks like the city got cleaned up pretty well. And I, we got a little cooperation from Mother Nature with that, too. But uh, I know you were working hard with the vendor to get that back on track. And the, the town looks good. And I think we're ready for if in case winter ever really does come around here. So thanks to you guys. Anyone else, ladies and gentlemen? Alderman. 
I just uh, like to uh, congratulate the uh, Geneva boys Viking basketball team. They're 15 and 0, and are high, one of the highly regarded uh, teams in the western suburbs. Uh, any of you that were there Friday night, it was a pretty exciting game. And if you uh, have the opportunity, I'd encourage you to uh, to take this team in. They play with a lot of spirit and uh, find a way to win. Be happy to entertain a motion to adjourn if there is such interest. So moved. Motion by Alderman Marks. Second. Second by Alderman Bruno with enthusiasm. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned, ladies and gentlemen.